back you watching power lunch uh, still no signs of any recovery on the broader markets despite a, a pretty hectic session as far as earnings are concerned some it majors have revealed numbers hcl technologies infotech some are still to go like mindtree tcs but on the other hand within the banking space access bank numbers haven't been that bad and bajaj autos numbers haven't been that bad so despite a fair bit of uh, performance as far as corporate earnings are concerned still the markets are finding it increasingly difficult but would the broader economy and the economic indicators provide that kind of impetus doesn't seem to be the case till now despite the fact that uh, economic data and the readings on the economy have been fairly strong for instance wpi at 6.16% and cpi much below 10% now have actually uh, generated hope that perhaps the rbi might pause as far as the next forthcoming meeting is concerned or even there are some voices which expect the rbi to perhaps cut rates just to give a meaningful boost to the economy would all those uh, all those expectations come out to be true let's get that question in and let's uh, let's go across to a very special voice we have with us right now dr subir gokarn director of research brookings india and former deputy governor of the rbi joining us right now from delhi dr gokarn thank you so much sir for joining us good afternoon great having you with us let's start off first by looking at the recent economic data uh Thank you. headline wpi 6.16% cpi also below the 10% mark does it actually give comfort to the rbi and do we see some meaningful action or do you think up ahead it's going to be status quo for now as far as rate cycle is concerned well i i don't want to make a a specific forecast on what uh, the rbi will do or not do Uh, but i think we've got to be uh, looking at the numbers uh, with a little more depth uh, than just uh, the the sort of month to month changes that we've been observing so far uh, yes obviously the headline numbers are lower than they were last month uh, the main reason for that as we uh, know now is uh, the very sharp uh, decrease in not not prices of course but in the rate of increase of uh, of vegetables uh even after that if you look at the cpi and the wpi numbers uh, vegetable prices increased year on year by about 37 38% in the cpi basket and about 57% in the wpi basket which tells you that uh, the the rate of increase may have moderated but you still got enormous pressure on the food front even from vegetables alone uh, in addition to that rice prices have been increasing at uh, at Uh, 14 15% uh, in, for for a long time now more than a year uh, milk prices are increasing uh, animal protein meat prices are increasing so food inflation is uh, is entrenched is endemic and is uh, you know inevitably going to have an impact on uh, monetary policy decisions so the number may have uh, come down the headline number may have come down uh, giving some comfort giving some release a uh, relief Uh, and essentially that's what uh, motivated the rbi to pause in december basically arguing that because vegetable prices are going to come off sharply uh, as a result of uh, the new new crop coming in that uh, the numbers the headline numbers for december would be that much lower that's panned out but to move from this uh, Uh, transition to talking about the prospect of a cut i think is a little premature inflation pressures are still there uh, the core inflation number on cpi which is the non food non energy component of the cpi is still at 8% uh, if the rbi as is expected uh, shifts its uh, policy benchmark uh, index to the cpi from the wpi uh, then i think we have uh, to keep that high number that core inflation number in mind as well uh, that su- does suggest uh, more structural more deep rooted problems on the inflation front and that is certainly going to have an impact on the way the rbi thinks about its interest rate uh, trajectory over the next few months right uh, dr gogan coming back to the point of core number i was looking at the core number core wpi inched up even uh, uh, core wpi inflation has actually mimicked core cpi inflation uh the and according to some that actually hints that demand pressures have probably not cooled off enough to generate sustained disinflationary trends in the economy would you agree to that well if you look at the core uh, wpi it's it's uh, looking at the the manufacturing component of wpi is below 3% and has been in that relatively subdued range for quite some time now uh what this suggests is obviously that producers really have very little pricing power they're not able to pass on uh, the higher costs of 
energy of food that is through the their wage pressures uh, to their to their customers and that basically i think can be interpreted as reflecting uh, a soft demand pressures no no or the, the demand pressures are essentially non not playing a significant role in the system on the other hand the persistence of uh, high core in the cpi would suggest that uh, at least from the point of of wages and services that are are labor intensive that the high food prices are perhaps passing through uh, through or being transmitted through the higher uh, wage demands that people are making because food prices are high and so i think that does to some extent explain the the divergence or the 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 dif difference between the two indices as far as the score measure is concerned i don't think demand is an issue here i think the growth numbers certainly suggest that uh, the demand pressures are unlikely to be playing a role at on at the macro level i think the problem is more likely to be the transmission of high food prices in through wages uh, which are then leading to higher costs and therefore higher prices so that process seems to be playing out if you look at the numbers being generated by the two indices and if that's the case then clearly there is uh, an argument that the, the that monetary policy should be still attempting to rein in and to contain expectations and i think that that that's the sort of broad reading that i would uh, make of these numbers what about the industrial production numbers uh, dr gokaran extremely weak on all counts for instance in the manufacturing space 10 out of the 22 industries in manufacturing witnessed negative growth with eight industries growing slower than last year does it mean that slow down in the manufacturing sector is getting entrenched and perhaps may take a very long time we might take a very long time to come out of this glut i think uh, <clears throat> as you pointed out this is not uh, a recent phenomenon we've had sluggishness in manufacturing and the industrial sector broadly speaking uh, for for over a year uh, interest high interest rates are one reason for this but not certainly not the only reason and uh, we have to look uh, elsewhere uh, at at some structural problems that are actually keeping the manufacturing sector subdued Uh, i think the absence of any momentum on investment overall clearly there is there has been high investment investment to gdp still remains above 30% it was 33% in the last uh, quarterly uh, gdp numbers that's very very healthy 33% investment is not a bad number but uh, what uh, seems to be the problem is that it is skewed towards certain sectors or certain activities that are are getting investment and we've seen just to give you a very a specific example a lot of investment not now but in the last 2 or 3 years in the power sector a lot of generation capacity was uh, was uh, put up but just as these were coming uh, or approaching uh, commercial or the, the the ability to to deliver power they find themselves stuck for coal for the, for want of coal and i think uh, that's an imbalance which reflects in a very inefficient use of of capacity of capital Uh, which then translates into a low growth rate so these are i think uh, imbalances which are uh, hurting growth despite investment at a macro level being relatively healthy uh, and uh, this obviously translates into lower demand for various things now if you look at the specific numbers the the sec the product wise numbers in the iip uh, there is something like mining equipment which has seen a very sharp decline and this would then correlate well with uh, all of the constraints that uh, the mining sector is facing in terms of being able to expand uh, output and obviously if you can't mine uh, nobody is going to want to buy mining equipment which means that that particular sector will suffer so i think there are these uh, you know stories these sort of uh, internal linkages that we're seeing play out in the in the news reporting every day uh, reflecting quite uh, quite directly in the in the, in the numbers right and but do you think the rbi will take a constructive look at these iip numbers and perhaps uh, uh, might do something purely on the basis of the slowdown or do you think uh, 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 the rbi perhaps would be more inclined to act based on the inflationary numbers rather than what we are getting on the industrial front i mean you talk to uh, industry guys you talk to people in the manufacturing space they want at least some leeway or some relief as far as the rate cycle is concerned but they also say that it's not only the interest rate cycle there are other factors at play slow down in decision making not much approvals coming in so even they know and they acknowledge that it's not all about interest rates but do you think the rbi would have to look at this in a more construct 
constructive way the industrial slowdown and perhaps that could force their hand to some extent not in a very major way but to some extent well i think you have to keep in mind that uh, the judgment on whether to uh, swing the pendulum towards the growth uh, slowdown away from the inflation pressure uh, has to be made uh, on the basis of whether you're going to do uh, good or you're going to do some good and possibly more harm. Uh, the risk is that if you at this point signal that uh, you know you are putting aside or de-emphasizing the inflation objective, the inflation management objective and uh, putting a priority on, on growth uh, stimulus, uh, you're basically sending the signal that you're comfortable with uh, a 9.8% 9, 9 consumer inflation, 7% uh, or 6% 6, 6, uh, 6 uh, wholesale inflation and a core inflation the cons on the CPI at 8%. Now is that a signal that you want to send? Are you accepting that as a tolerable level of inflation which then risks uh, getting higher? Uh, or do you want to focus on what you're most likely to control which is inflation and uh, you know there's so many other factors that are weighing in on growth that should those factors not be uh, to not uh, should those factors not be addressed uh, so it's a difficult decision and it has always been a difficult decision particularly when the growth and inflation numbers are pulling in different directions uh, but i think the signal coming from the rbi for some time has been when you're making a trade off and you're making choices uh, the choice always has to come down on the side of dealing with the inflation problem and I suspect that is how it's going to be in in uh, in the coming, uh, you know, in the foreseeable future. Right, uh, Dr. Gokaran, I'm going to be a little brave. I'm going to come out of the economic domain and perhaps pose a question to you on the political front. I'm sure you must be tracking all the political developments, the waves that the Aam Party has created, and it's and it's a wave of politics which perhaps is not going down too well with the industry, uh, whether it's uh, a telecom, whether it's uh, discoms now, uh, whether it's uh, some of the other sectors which have come under their their action, FDI and retail. So there's lots happening. On the other hand, the action is is, is getting hotter now with the Lok Sabha elections coming up. Uh, how would one look at the economy during these four five months? Do you think till the time a new government is formed, you're not going to see much action on the broader economy? At least a pickup in the industrial cycle, a pickup in broader economic growth that would only start to see uh, once the elections are out of the way and we see a new government at the centre. Well, I think we have to look at this at two levels. Uh, we have to recognize that some of the growth momentum uh, and the drivers of growth, more generally speaking, uh, are within the hands of states. So it, while the center may be going in for an election in the next uh, four or five months, uh, many states are not anywhere close to, their, to the end of their legislative terms. We've, we've obviously had four states uh, that have just uh, elected new governments. So to the extent that state governments can push ahead with their particular growth uh, uh, reinforcing strategies, whatever they are doing to push growth, and you know, some states are doing it better than others, obviously. Uh, I think that is going to allow for some momentum to be, or some, some momentum to be maintained, uh, whatever that momentum is. But obviously there are also a lot of issues which require uh, very direct and very significant and not, not just uh, trivial attention and action by the central government. And you know, these, these, these relate to f the agricultural sector, these related, relate to infrastructure, uh, the fiscal, the whole fiscal uh, readjustment including the GST, that's of course a center and state uh, coordination issue. These are uh, decisions, I think, which uh, will have to uh, await the new parliament and a longer-term vision, a longer-term view coming into the central government. So that is obviously a post-election uh, phenomenon. But I also want to say that you know there is so much uh, uncertainty, or if I, I won't say uncertainty, but uh, opacity, if not no clear visibility, on what the positions of different parties are on specific issues. Uh, many of these issues are of critical importance uh, in terms of addressing both the growth and the inflation problem in the economy. And the more clarity we have on what each contender to uh, government is willing to do or is considering doing to address these problems, I think the more, uh, more, more let's say, uh, 
perhaps uh, st stable, robust, uh, will the outcome be? People are then able to anticipate that certain issues will be prioritized and dealt with while others may remain on the back burner. And that is, I think, going to help to shape a much more uh, uh, predictable kind of investment uh, and economic environment. I think that's very important for, for uh, parties to do right now. So, you know, they are in the process of preparing the manifestos and so on. But I think it's important not just to have uh, the, the form statements that manifestos typically make, but very concrete, uh, very specific solutions uh, being offered to uh, all of the problems that we are uh, talking about every day. Uh, Dr. Gokaran, thank you so much, sir, as always, for joining us. It's a pleasure chatting with you. And thank you so much for your valued inputs. That's Dr. Subir Gokaran talking about the state of the economy, expectations from the RBI, and a little bit of comment as well on the political side of things.